Hello, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop, and I'm back with another daily practice tip. Now, today we're going to be talking about a little bit more advanced subject, upper register development. I had a really great question about developing the upper register. Now, the, the question specifically had to do with developing the upper register with braces. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, but there are some overarching concepts that I think we could really discuss as well here. So first off, playing with braces. Um, if you've gone through the process of learning how to play with braces, you understand a lot of this. If you haven't, there are some challenges with this here. You know, first off, it's really important to remember what kind of role the dentition, the shape of our teeth play in supporting our embouchure. Um, even though we don't want to be play using a lot of pressure when we're playing, and we'll talk about that in a minute, the, the, the teeth still play a huge role in, in supporting this shape of the embouchure. And of course, with braces, whether we're talking traditional braces or Invisalign, you know, so, whatever it might be, we're changing the shape of that. We're changing the distance of the lips to the, the teeth and what that feels like. And then of course there can be uncomfort, you know, comfort issues there. There can be potentially pain and some other things along with it. So overall, we understand that there are some challenges there. I will tell you on a side note that a lot of folks who go through this process with braces and are able to keep practicing and keep you know developing when they get done with it, a lot of times they end up with as strong, if not stronger, embouchures than if they didn't. Um, I think there are a couple things with that. I think a big thing is that our embouchure, especially all of our muscles here, our muscles here and all of our muscles along the side of our cheeks here, all of which help support the shape, they get used to having to develop the somberture a little bit further out. It takes a little bit more strength, a little bit more work to support it out here. Then all of a sudden, when things shift back just a little bit, they don't have to work as hard, but they're stronger for it. The other part of that is that a lot of folks who've gone through this process have already gotten used to playing with a minimal amount of pressure. Now, there are different schools of thought when it comes to how much pressure we should have. You can go from the absolute zero pressure idea. Uh, Bill Watrous famously did a lot of work with this where he said you shouldn't use any pressure whatsoever. And there, are, I don't think there's a lot of folks on the other side of the equation, but there are a few folks who say, ah, you know, you really should, you know, use a fair amount of pressure. I think most of us fall somewhere in between, but I think we're going to lean towards the less pressure side there for a number of different reasons. Um, you know, physically, hopefully it's going to be better for you. I've certainly injured my armature before by pressing too hard, and I've had to relearn how to play. Um, when we're not pressing, we're having, we can have better tone. We can be have better endurance. We're going to have better flexibility. There's a lot of different things built with it. So I think we want to minimize how much pressure we're using. One of the places where it can be tempting to use pressure is with the upper register. So if we think for just a minute about what happens when we are playing higher, what's, what's actually going on, it's really just that our lips are vibrating faster, right? And so how do we accomplish that? Well, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. Now, we can, in theory, we can press harder. If we think about this, it kind of makes sense. We're making the lips tighter by doing that. And so in theory, it means they can vibrate faster. But of course, there are a whole host of other problems that that causes as well. So we don't want to be pressing harder. We don't want to be using pressure here. Um, there is a, for some folks, especially who don't spend as much time, think about it. Um, when we're going into the upper register, we can start to smile more. Like this, where the aperture starts to go sideways. Like this, of course, what are we doing? It's like a rubber band. We're stretching the rubber band, making it tighter. And so therefore, again, we can help it to vibrate faster. Well, this has some other issues as well. Um, what most folks find that work best in the upper register is really keeping the apertures the same in a lot of ways. We're making the opening for the lips a little bit smaller, but much more importantly, we're not changing so much what we're doing with the lips, we're changing what we're doing with the air. We keep talking about air and the importance that air has in our playing, What's really worked well for me is when, um, and I learned this from my grad school professor, he changed a lot of how I play um, and made a lot of improvements, it's kind of done a lot of what I've been able to do today. And one of the things I learned from him is 
controlling the airspeed and, the, and the, the difference it can make in how we control that airspeed. So in the upper register, because we want our lips to be vibrating faster, we need to be using faster air. Um, I like the term faster, cooler air. And so the airspeed gets faster, it gets cooler, and it can get a little bit smaller because the aperture, the opening is smaller. How do we accomplish that? What's worked really well for me, and again, this is something I learned from my professor, is bringing our air supply up. So when we're breathing, we're opening up and we're expanding all of this whole upper torso, right? Everything's expanding upwards. When we play in the upper register, what I do is then I think about the air supply coming up. Um, you can visualize using like an elevator, for example, um, the diaphragm moving up. And what that does is it's like an air compressor. We're taking the same amount of air, we're pushing it into a smaller space. That means that it's going to be moving naturally faster as well. So, for example, if I'm using, thinking about my airflow from the lower register to the upper register, I'm going to take a big breath. As I start breathing, my air is going to be all over here. But as I'm coming up, I can physically, I'm feeling my air. Everything is moving upward. My diaphragm is moving everything up. And I'm really focusing on the upper chest here, my rib cage, and I'm feeling my diaphragm here, everything moving upward to help support that faster, cooler air that we need to have with this. So first thing to do when we're practicing the upper register, think about that idea. What I would do is think about this nice expansion, this 3D breath, opening things up. And then focusing the airflow. Um, a lot of times I'll use my hand. I learned this, of course, from the breathing gym, from Sam Palafian and all the great work he did. Focusing my airflow there and thinking about that elevator coming up to help give me that compression. So that's really step one there is getting that faster airflow moving. Now, how do we practice it? Well, we can practice our breathing, but then of course we wanna be putting it on the instrument as well. Uh, I think we're gonna talk about some other um, range exercises as we go along through these daily practice tips, but I'm gonna give you one exercise here today um, that I've used, I use with my students that makes it a little bit easier to work our way into the upper register. When we're playing our brass instruments, of course, we know that the higher we get, the more of these shelves, we partials we get, right? The notes get closer and closer together. But what that also means is that there can be a little bit more of a leap to get from one note to the next in the upper register. And sometimes making those transitions can be difficult and can be difficult to get across them. So how do we work on getting into this upper register without dealing with all of these different partial shelves? Well, we can use the magic of the gliss here and the magic of just how the all of these different overtones lock in place in different positions. So what I would do is I'm gonna start on a middle C, but I'm gonna start on that C in sixth position. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm start going to start glissing from C to D flat, from fifth position to, to sit, from sixth position to fifth position, and then back, and then from sixth position to fourth position and back. And as I'm getting further and further in, as I'm getting higher and higher through my register, I'm thinking about supporting with that air more and more. Every breath I take, I am bringing that air upward. They're thinking about more of that compression, that elevator coming up. So I'm thinking about that airspeed. I'm thinking about trying to minimize how much pressure I'm using here. I'm thinking about keeping my armature nice and firm and keeping the vibration right in the middle of the lips here. Like that. Okay, so now we've gotten up to an F above the staff. Now we can do the same thing like we just did. We can play that F in sixth position as well. And we can start there and do that same exercise now as we work our way through. Now we're sitting on the eighth partial already, which means when we arrive at first position, we're gonna be playing a B flat, an octave above the staff there. So 
we're working on building our range here. And this is something that we can do to slowly build this up. Maybe we can't get that to that B flat today. That's just fine. Every note, every gliss I play, I'm taking a new breath, refilling up the tank, thinking about that airflow there, and I'm being aware of what's happening here. If I feel like I'm starting to push, or if I get to a note that's just not working, I'm going to stop. One of the worst things we can do when we're working on developing the upper register is to get that, that point where we're getting the... where you just can't get the note to lock in. If we keep trying to push it and push it and push it and get that note to happen, all we're going to do is develop bad habits, whether it's pushing, whether it's using our ear wrong, whether we're, whenever we're playing, we're training our ears, our embouchure, our hand, our slide, everything, all of this working together. And so if we keep trying to do something like that, where we're trying to get a note to work and it's not happening, all we're doing is teaching our body to do the wrong thing. So. It takes a little bit of humility, we're gonna stop and we're not gonna do any more today and say, I'm here's these concepts I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about them the right way, I'm gonna come back and do it again tomorrow. The more we're able to do this, it's going to happen. And everybody's upper register develops in different times. My upper register took a very long time to develop. And frankly, even throughout my entire high school career, I did not have a fantastic range at all. I hear some of these great high schoolers now, I say, Man, I wish I could have played like that because I sure didn't. And so it takes different times for everybody. But think about a few of these ideas. And again, more important, more than anything else, that airflow. The more we can learn how to control, how to use that airflow, it just makes everything easier. So I hope this daily practice tip was helpful. Again, I think we're going to talk about more upper range work as we go along here. If you have any comments, if you have suggestions for other things that you would like me to talk about, please feel free to send those to me. Comment. Um, shoot an email to our email at tromboneshop at schmidtmusic.com. Let me know. I'm here to help everybody. We're here to support each other, and I really appreciate all the feedback. So please, happy practicing, and keep making music.